and welcome to the show. My name is Amanda Ostrander. I am a teacher turned homeschool mom and this is Raising A to Z, a place where we talk about all things homeschooling. And today I'm gonna to give you my Christmas gift guide for educational and fun toys. I think we can all agree that kids get a lot of toys, especially during the holidays. We have multiple siblings. Um, they have both sets of grandparents, they have Christmas gift exchanges. We have all kinds of things, all kinds of, of people who give our kids gifts. And we are incredibly blessed and thankful for that. But it, it gets to be a lot. And so when it comes to Christmas and what we're getting our kids, I want to be selective. You know, I want to make sure that we're picking things that are going to be educational and valuable and worth the time and the money that we spend on it, but also is not just gonna like rot their brains. I'm gonna share with you some of the games and the things that I absolutely love that have I've either purchased over the years, that I purchased this year very intentionally, or things that I've given as gifts that like just are fantastic. So first off, when it comes to gifts, I like to try to take a very practical approach for the most part. Our kids, definitely get mostly things that they are going to need or use over the next six months. That is kind of how I look at Christmas is like, what do you need? What are what are you going to need in the next few months? I definitely do a little bit of this when it comes to like planning ahead. So I will sometimes pick out gifts that are gonna go with a unit study that we're gonna do in the future or things like that. So that's why I do love to have kind of a year long plan. It gives me I can, I can move my budget around a little bit, right? Because I can now use a little bit of my Christmas budget to help with my homeschooling or vice versa. So I do try to keep it very practical. My kids get clothes that they might need. Um, they get shoes, they get uh, uniforms. For example, they got leotards one year because they outgrew their leotards for gymnastics. Like those kinds of things are definitely things that we've put under the Christmas tree before and go over very well because it's things that they're, they need to do the thing that they love. You know what I mean? Um, so definitely things to think about. We also are big into like making sure we get our kids, not only things that they need, but that like get use. So things like toboggans, we live in Canada. It snows a lot here. Going sliding is a big deal. And it's something we do a good part of the winter. A good toboggan was always a great gift. Um, really good mittens, really good hats. We've invested in like different snow gear before. Like those are things that we've purchased um that are practical that they need but also like add a lot of fun and like value to our lives so definitely don't forget about doing things like that those are fantastic things to have as like the foundation of your gift giving the things that my kids are going to need over the next few months um to allow them to do what they want to do the other thing that we do try to do is do at least a little bit of like experiential gifts so that could be things like movie movie tickets or like movie passes. You can buy those at Costco. Great deal. We've done in the past, we've done like memberships to different places. Uh, back in 2020, my husband bought the entire family tickets to like Disney on Ice. That was a huge hit and added a lot of value to our lives, a lot of like excitement and it was a fun thing to do, but it also didn't bring stuff into our house. So experience gifts can be fantastic. So consider things like lessons, memberships, um, tickets to go do something like a, take a class or go, like I said, go to the movies. Passes to like an indoor amusement park is really popular around here or the trampoline park because again, Canada, uh, it's cold. And so sometimes it's just like too cold to go play outside or whatever. It's a great day to head over to like the cup center or the trampoline park and go burn off some energy when it's like minus 40 outside. So those are some great things that you can like put money into that don't bring stuff into your house. But if you're looking to bring things into your house or you're like, and like kids like to unwrap gifts, right? Like unwrapping a ticket only goes so far. Um, so what are some things that you can bring? So I'm gonna show you things that I have purchased either for this year or I purchased in the past that have gone tons and tons of play. Um, this year, rainbow looms seem to be the thing. Um, Alexi got into them at summer camp with one of the kids there, uh, loves rainbow looms. And then my niece asked for rainbow looms for her birthday. The nice thing about rainbow looms is they're not overly expensive. I think this pack was like under 20 bucks. They go on sale all the time. Um, and the knockoff stuff, like not the Rainbow Loom brand, but the other stuff 
is a great, it's like they're the same thing. They're rubber bands. Um, so I definitely need something fun. It is something creative. You can do a lot of like colors and patterns and all of that. And then something that they wear. So it's not like stuff that's just necessarily sitting around. It's something that they're making and wearing and they trade and they build and it's awesome. So Rainbow Looms, definitely something I recommend. Fantastic. Another gift that I have purchased in the past are Magna Tiles, specifically the Picasso brand. I bought these a set for the kids two Christmases ago. Okay, two Christmases ago. So Lexi was six, Zoe was four. Um, they play with them almost every single day. Um, like they probably play like 300 out of 365 days a year with Picasso tiles to this day. It, like it has probably been one of the best Christmas investments I've ever purchased because they, they're just fantastic. I like the Picasso tiles because they don't have holes in them. Like sometimes you get the Magna tiles and they have, it's just like the, the edge. I like the Picasso tiles because it's a full tile and the magnets are like inside the plastic. Like you'd have to break this to get the magnet out. So a little bit safer. Um, the other reason I like the mag the Picasso tiles over other brands is because my kids like to build houses and then because it's solid, they can actually take little characters and play in the houses that they build. Um, whereas like you can't really do that with magnet tiles that have holes in them because obviously the whole, they just fall through. So Picasso tiles are fantastic. I highly, highly recommend them. They are amazing. If you have something you want to add on, which is also a great Christmas gift, um, the car bases are fantastic. They're not overly expensive. Um, so then it has like the, whoops. Then it comes with like the base with the wheels, which is fantastic. My kids have two. Not that I can find them right now because they are, they have played with them and hidden them somewhere, um, but they're great. And then the other, if I was gonna add an add-on set that adds a lot of value would be the Marble Run set. Um, so it does come with a couple of pieces that have holes, but then it comes with like this tubing that you can make tubes, you can make marble, like slides, which is pretty, my kids aren't really into the Marble Run aspect of it. They don't make Marble Runs. They make slides for all of their characters or tunnels or like it just creates so much play that it is just like so much imaginative play comes out of the Marble Run pieces because they are just so versatile. I would recommend them over other Picasso tile expansion packs. Um, they're just fantastic. So Picasso tiles with bases, with the car bases or the, the Marble Run expansion packs are a great gift. Both my kids asked for watches this year. Um, and actually I had a nephew who asked for a watch this year. So watches, great. Something that they can wear, something that they can have that is not necessarily junk sitting on the floor. I picked this watch up at uh, Walmart. They had a whole bunch of these digital watches with the bracelets, which is what attracted me to them in the first place because we're Swifties um, in this house. And my kids I thought would love kind of like the bracelet add-on to the watch um I thought it'd be fantastic so definitely a, something like a watch is a great option and um they were like 20 bucks for a watch which I found really really reasonable and so I have two for my kids and then I will be getting a third for my nephew so watches great wearable practical gifts um, but they're really fun and pretty. So speaking of wearable gifts, both of my kids asked for backpack purses. So my niece had a little backpack purse that was like a plasticky, like a plastic set, like a cheap plastic set. And I have found the set that it was and it was running around $25, $26. So I, instead of getting something cheap and plastic, I actually went and found like an actual backpack purse which I figured is like kind of a nice little size they can definitely put like a water bottle and like a notebook or like a little toy in here it's got the adjustable straps and um, it came in multiple colors and it was running on sale they were running for like 22 bucks regular price was around 30 depending on the color um of course the color Zoe wanted which was orange was like 67 dollars but I think uh I think she'll be very happy with the blue version of this that I got for her, which was on sale. But yeah, something like this is great. Um, wearable, again, 
something that they can wear, something that is going to be able to be practical for them, but also a lot of fun. Something else that I got last year that has gotten tons of play this year. Um, I was influenced to get this online and I'm going to influence you. Make do. Make do tools. So these are cardboard tools. Like there's a little saw. There's this like a little perforator. Uh, this is a screw. And so basically you get the little, you get the little fasteners. And so this goes on like this. You can poke a hole. Let me see if I can get it in here. You can take it and you can like poke a hole. And then you can like screw pieces of cardboard together. So this is great for um, like, obviously, yeah, that was just showing you, but this is great. You can build with pieces of cardboard. So like you can build cabins, you can build roads, you can build all kinds of stuff and it's all safe. Like, like it's, it's made for cardboard, but it's also not going to like cut yourself with any of it. So my kids play with this all the time. We had a large um, fridge box that they cut into a gazillion pieces by the end of it. And it was, they played with it for months. So I highly recommend, this, especially if you have like a kid who's very tactile, who loves to build, loves to do engineering. Um, these are fantastic. You can purchase, I have a full kit here, um, but you can purchase, you can purchase just the individual tools. If you were going to purchase individual tools, I would recommend the saw, the screwdriver, and a pack of the screws. Those would be my top recommendations if you want to buy just like a few things. Um, but my kids definitely play with this constantly. So make do, excellent purchase, great for engineering, creative play, all those kinds of things. This is a gift that I've got for Alexi. Comes in a case. Alexi is my little uh, singer. And so I got her a bright pink karaoke mic. I might regret this. I'm not even lying. Um, this might become my worst purchase ever in the sense that I, I know she's going to be singing into this mic every single day for the rest of her life. Um, but you know, she's a musical kid. We got to like pursue those, those musical interests. So this is a, basically if you're not, if you have no idea what this is, it is a Bluetooth enabled uh, karaoke machine that you hold in your hand. So you can, um, but con connect it through like your iPad or your phone and add the echo, the volume, it plays through the speakers and then they sing into it. Does that not look like fun for a kid? Um, so Alexi is getting this for Christmas. She did not ask for it because I don't think she understands that it exists, but she sings karaoke at my in-laws all the time and she's obsessed with it. Um, she also, like, we can't go over there without her singing karaoke. She has to sing every time she's there. So we're gonna bring it home in a little bit more of a smaller, more convenient size. So that's what she's getting. She doesn't know that that kind of karaoke machine exists. Um, so she didn't think to ask for it, but that's what she's gonna get. Um, another thing that we purchase, if you're looking for something that's like the best bang for your buck, I'm a big fan of like small plas solid plastic toys. So whether it is animals, dinosaurs, this is some mermaids that I'm sure Zoe is going to use in the tub. They're great because they're multi-purpose. We can put them into a sensory bin. We can put them in the sandbox outside. We can play with them in Play-Doh. We can put them in the tub. They can wash them. They can get them dirty. They can, and like, you don't have to worry about them. So some, if you have young kids and you're looking for like, what's gonna be the best bang for my buck? Um, definitely like plastic toys. This one is Wild Republic. Um, I liked it because Zoe really likes mermaids right now. Um, but I will put some links to Tubes, which is one of the companies that we purchase most of our plastic toys from because they're just like, they're really good quality and not overly expensive. You can find them at Michael's, which is an odd place to find them, but you can find them at Michael's and you can use your Michael's coupons if you're looking for like 30 to 50% off, depending on what your weekly coupon is on them. So tip, um, but these are fantastic. And I highly recommend little plastic toys. They're just so versatile. 
You can also get cheap stuff from the dollar store. Like don't feel like you have to be expensive when it comes to plastic toys. The cheap stuff at the dollar store works and it encourages just as much imaginative play as the, the, the slightly more expensive stuff or the really expensive stuff. I know my Zoe sees the expensive, expensive ones at like chapters where it's like $15 for a pony. Um, and I tell her all the time, no, but she sees them and she just, I'm like, it's the same as the pony you have at home. So she's like, oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So, um, what else? Okay. This was a purchase I made for Alexi last year. Now, if you have a kid who is not creative, maybe not for them, but, uh, Alexi absolutely loves her Instamax camera. I don't think I can adequately tell you how much she loves her Instamax camera. Um, she uses it constantly. She, I got the kit that came with, I think it was like 10 packs of film. She asked for Christmas that one of the things that she wants is more film because she has used it all. Um, it is just such a simple thing for taking photos. She loves that she can actually have the photo when it's done. It's not like it just digital, it disappears. So she makes like, she'll go out and do like photography sessions where she'll like go and take pictures of things outside or she'll like take pictures of Zoe in different outfits that they've created or and so she'll basically do like photography sets which is like super cool and then she like keeps them together and like it's a big thing for her so um i like it because it's very very portable i do recommend getting some kind of case for it we definitely got this one um the top pops off and the camera sits inside of it and you can still use the camera when it's inside um but yes, definitely recommend a case, especially if younger kids. Um, the other thing that I like about the Instamax, I don't know if you can see that little mirror. That's a selfie mirror. So that when the kids are taking pictures, you teach them that they just have to look in the mirror when they're taking their selfies. And that's how they know where they'll be in the picture. So it does help them have a lot of fun um, and take actually better photos. So you're not wasting film. So she has the camera already so she will get film for her for christmas i just have to order it it's on my list um but yeah the instamax camera is a great gift for any kid okay puzzles if your kids are into puzzles definitely pick up some great puzzles i picked up a few of these at um chapters when they had like a sale they are um 150 pieces which I think it's like a pretty decent size. We've had bigger puzzles and I purchased them and we've never been able to get them done. My kids just don't have the the wear, the the stamina for doing a puzzle that big. So I think anything under like 300 pieces would be great for kids unless you have a kid who's like puzzle obsessed. But puzzles are great and fun. Um, I like them when they have a pretty solid box too. Just a personal, personal preference. So I definitely have some puzzles. Um, and these also make really great stocking stuffers, which is probably where this is going to go in a stocking somewhere. So now let's get into games. Games are the greatest. Um, my kids are obsessed with games, especially Alexi. Alexi is obsessed with games. So we have quite a few board games. If you're looking for game recommendations, definitely check out next week's video. I'm going to do a whole recommendation of like my top math games, my top literacy games, my top like just fun games that are just great strategy games. I'm going to do a whole session on great games for kids, but I did pick up a couple new games for this year. Um, Unstable Unicorns for Kids. Um, basically, you're trying to build a unicorn army that can take over and take on your opponent's army. It is not an overly long game, 15 to 45 minutes according to the box. You can play with two players or up to six, which is nice because sometimes you just want to play with two people and sometimes you want to play with more. Um, and I find... Sometimes it's hard to find a game that works for that. Um, this game is ages six and up, which I'm going to say means probably most five-year-olds can play it as well. Um, but I've found these online on, uh, they've gone on sale quite a few times recently on Amazon for like under 10 bucks. So I've actually purchased several of these. I think I've purchased four this year and given them away as, as birthday presents to all the little girls and that we've had birthdays for recently because a game with unicorns like come on that's like a no-brainer um another game that i purchased is taco versus burrito you're trying to build the best taco you can in 15 minutes while trying to also destroy your opponent's taco with like weird ingredients and like just make it fall apart so this is a great game another kind of like fun card game 
I we've played this recently. Um, I don't remember where we played it, but the kids, Alexi really liked it, so I added that to this year's list. And then this was uh, King Domino, which is a kind of like a domino slash build your own city kind of game. It is not a very difficult game. Zoe has learned how to play this and played it on her own um, at co-op one day with some friends. And I say that's as an, as an, it's a, it's a standard for me because Zoe's not a huge board game fan. She's not like Alexi in that sense. And she doesn't really have the stamina to play a full game. And she played two rounds of this because they're, each round is fairly short. Um, it's a lot of fun. You're, there's like a matching. You don't really need to like do too much strategy or reading to play the game, which is nice if you have younger kids, but she loved it. So I picked it up because why not? And then the next game I picked up is Starport. Uh, this is like an introductory to role playing games. So if you're like dun into Dungeons and Dragons or storytelling games or things like that, this is like a kid's version. So like introducing the idea of like pick a character, build a character, head out on a mission or a quest, make up a story as you go, roll the dice and see what happens. That's what we're doing here. So it is like Dungeons and Dragons, but designed completely for kids. And this manual walks you through how to play it and how to play it and what happens next. So it is all included and it is fantastic. So this is also be going to one of my kids for Christmas this year. So I think they're gonna love it. I think Alexi's gonna like it, but I also think Zoe's gonna love it because she's very into storytelling. So that's what, that's gonna be great. And then the last thing that I really focus on when I'm buying my kids Christmas presents, books. I really want them to be avid readers. I think it's so important. Um, and Alexi is definitely turning into a voracious reader. She reads so much. Um, so I definitely want to get some great books. I always get books. I always try to get them at least three, if not more, for Christmas. So I picked up some new books. I'm going to show you what I got for them in terms of books. So I find these books. This is a series that we collect as a family. Um, the Little People Big Dreams series. Basically, every book is a very child friendly biography and it goes through that person's life, their major accomplishments. It gives them you a slightly more detailed um, biography at the back. And then it also gives you bonus reading that if you want to study this person, it gives you recommendations and titles as well. I We collect the series. So I find these books predominantly at Winners or uh, Marshalls because they are often like $12 or less, which is pretty good for a hard covered book. Um, and then I did pick up a couple that I got on a sale on chapters. So for Christmas, they're getting Steve Jobs, uh, Princess Diana, Albert Einstein, and Queen Elizabeth. So those are gonna be, we'll split them between the two kids and they'll get a biography. For Zoe, I picked up Pizza and Taco, Dare to be Scared. This is a book that I got her the first one for back to school, the first Pizza and Taco. Zoe's a foodie, she likes to eat and she likes food. Um, and I thought it would just be fun. It's a uh, small graphic novel, like it's not a ton of reading. So for a kid who's just starting to read, I thought this would be very accessible for her. Uh, let me just say she's fallen in love. We have, she's fallen in love with the pizza and tacos. We, she got the first one. Then she got uh, a whole bunch. She used some money when she went to the used bookstore and bought one. And then we got a whole bunch from the library. And this is the newest one, which for my kid who loves Halloween and everything scary, as well as food, like this is perfect for her. So this is on her list. Her wish list is the pizza and taco um, dare to be scared book. So this is what she's getting. And I think I, I know she's going to love it because she's talked about it incessantly, incessantly for weeks. So great series, great introduction series. Fantastic. Um, Zoe's also going to be getting these books for me to read to her. I know she's not going to read them herself. They're not at her level, but the Dragon Girl series, we read all nine that were out and then books 10, 11, 12 came out kind of like over this summer, I think it was like uh, July, September, end of October, something like that. 
So I got the next three. They basically go in books in sets of three. So like one, two, and three go together, four, five, and six go together, seven, eight, nine go together. And it follows like three friends who have to, they have to say the magic horse. The threat is different in every kind of grouping, but that's what they're, they're setting off to do is try to save the forest. And basically they're three human friends who somehow get brought into the magic forest realm where they turn into dragons while they're there. And they have to like, they get to fly and breathe fire and all that. And then when they go home, they're just humans again. So yeah, my kids love them. Like absolutely love them. They're very sweet books. They're like a lot about like friendship and problem solving and like, they're great. So Zoe got book four, uh, book 10, 11 and 12, which ironically book 11 is Zoe the beach dragon so she's gonna get a kick out of that um but that's what she's gonna get and I will read them to her unless unless the reading thing clicks and then maybe she'll be reading them before we know it because she's right on the edge so that's what I've got for Zoe what do I got for Alexi this year okay so Alexi has been on a Thea Stilton kick she likes Thea Stilton over the Geronimo Stilton book series because she likes the girls and like the friendship aspect of the Thea Stilton series. We have, she has read so many Thea Stiltons this year. Um, she's averaging one a week, which since, since J July. So I think she's at like 10 or 12 that she's read this year. And right now she's kind of gone off of them because she's out of books. <laughs> She hasn't been able to get her hands on more recently that she has read, hasn't read yet. So I was very excited to find the newest one uh, at Walmart. And so that's what she's going to get. Thea Stilton in the Cave of Stars. The other nice thing is Zoe likes to peruse these books as well. Um, she, like I said, Zoe can't read them, but she does like to look at the pictures and kind of figure out what the story is. So it's a great book because Alexi will read it and then Zoe will also like sit there and like spend 10, 15 minutes kind of going through them at night. So this will eventually become Zoe's and she's already really excited about it. So it's kind of a win-win for me and, and both kids like it. The next book I got her is Aaron Blaby, Cat on the Run. Now um, we are huge fans of the Bad Guy series. If you have kids, the Bad Guy series by Aaron is fantastic. We have read, I think last year we read like 17 of the books. There, it is a graphic novel series. It is fantastic. Yes, last year we read 17 or 18 of the books. In one year, back to back to back, they were obsessed. So when I saw that there was a new series coming out from him, Cat on the Run, I thought like, we've got to try it out. And I thought Alexi would love it. So pick that up for Alexi. So the back of the book is what happens when the world's biggest cat video star gets accused of a crime she doesn't commit. She becomes a cat on the run. But how do you avoid capture and prove your innocence when you're the most famous feline on the planet? I thought that was just going to be a hoot for her. And so that's what she's getting. And then something a little bit more advanced because like I'm Alexi's at the age where I'm finding she's like she's picking the Thea Stiltons because she loves them. But if we're looking at like the word, the content of it and like how many words, um, it's still pretty like low words, but she's going through these so fast that it's hard to keep like, like I said, one of these a week is, and that's like, she's not reading every day, right? Like that every day. So like, that's a couple of sittings for her. She's getting through that. So I want, I've been trying to find books that can kind of push her into something not necessarily more mature, but like the next step of, of reading. So I got, I saw this and it was like how to save a unicorn, which come on, kids and unicorns sounds great. Uh, the summary is essentially that Giada, the main character has traveled to New York city to start her magical veterinarian training. And she finds out that there is a baby unicorn that is lost in the tri-state area. And she suspects something bad has happened and she needs to find this baby unicorn and save it. So how to save a unicorn i just felt like that was going to be some, like a really good hook for alexi she's been reading the last kids on earth which again great book series if you're looking for it um but she already has it obviously so i thought this is like kind of i thought this had a similar vibe but was different like it's still kids trying to solve things 
figure things out in a magical kind of sense with like magic around them or like unicorns or mythical creatures. Last Kids on Earth is kids trying to figure it out while there's a zombie apocalypse happening. Like, but a very kid friendly zombie apocalypse. Let me add you like my, it's great. Um, so yeah, I got that for her. So that's Christmas. That's my Christmas gift guide. I, like I said, keep things practical, things they're going to use, things that are going to be educational and that they're going to love. Those are kind of my recommendations. I hope that this gives you some ideas of things that are going to get lots of use in your house and that are going to help your kids just soar with knowledge and education while having a whole bunch of fun. If you like this video and other videos like it, you might want to become a subscriber or a YouTube member. That way you get bonus content, early releases, coupons, notifications, updates, polls, all kinds of cool things. Um, you might want to check that out. And you might also want to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok so you can see what kind of cool books, games, toys my kids are using on a regular basis and that we are using in our homeschooling. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.